All right, we're going to move on now to factoring trinomials. That is things with three terms, and there are going to be a couple different forms here. Well, it's basically the same form, but we'll start with ones that look like that. x squared plus something times x plus something, and then we'll move on to ones where it has a coefficient in front, okay, something like that. All right, so it's kind of broken down into two things here. First, we're going to look at Factoring trinomials where there's no leading coefficient, or in other words, that a value is 1, and then afterwards we'll look at what is more difficult when there is a leading coefficient there. All right, you're going to get the idea for this by first of all doing this activity for yourself. Multiply those out, and then look for the pattern that you get. Where do each of the terms come from? Multiply it out write it down, you're going to get three terms every time, whether you use a rectangle or a algebra tiles or whatever, but look for the pattern every time of what happens. All right, so in other words, if you multiply this first one out here, you end up with, and try to do this maybe without having an intermediate step, you're going to get x squared, right, that, and you're going to get, you got that last term, plus 30, but the middle term is going to come from two places, it's going to come from, again, outside, and inside, you're going to get plus 13x. All right, as you continue down there, notice the same kinds of things. All right, like if you're doing this one here, get that first term, 2x squared, and get that last term, plus 15. But that middle term again, the middle term in there comes from two places here, outside and inside. So you got minus 6x and you have minus 5x. So this is going to be minus 11x. What we're doing here, okay, you're going to, you're going to finish those yourself. Finish those other six there. And again, look for the pattern, really get it for yourself. But we're going to look at what happens now. The opposite here. Whoa. Let's go back up there before we um, lose track of that. Okay, notice where each of the terms comes from, all right? As I said before, you got this first term here, 3x squared. You have the last term, that one's going to be minus 10. And then you have this middle term. If we were to write it out as four terms, minus 15x and plus 2x. These are the two middle terms, right? That comes from two places. Okay, that comes from the outside. You have the you have what you get from four different places. You have the first, you have the last, you have the outside and inside. Outside, inside. Alright? When it's simplified, 3x squared minus 13x minus 10. What we're doing now is we're taking this and we're going to try and break it down again into two binomials. As in we're going to take that and you know, if we didn't know it, if we didn't know what it, whoops, if we didn't know what it started with here, if we didn't know this, that's what we're trying to write. We're trying to write that this is, well, 3x plus 2 times x minus 5. Right? So like this. We're going to start where there's no leading coefficient. Right? This one has 3 as a leading coefficient. We're going to start where there's no leading coefficient. So these ones down here. This x squared plus 5x plus 4. If you're going to try and break that down, you have to think here, and we've used a rectangle before. Not that you have to use a rectangle to factor, but maybe the first one here we will. This is the result of two binomials. There's nothing in common there. It doesn't have a common factor, but it is the, it is the result of multiplying, by two, multiplying two binomials together. The way you probably want to approach this is, if that first term is x squared, there's only one way you can get x squared. Notice up here that that first term comes from the first two terms. So if this is x squared, the only way I can get that is if this is x and x. In other words, this is x and this is x. The only way I can get that x squared there. Right, because that's that, that's that first term. Now, the only way I can get that last term there of a 4 is if I have a 2 and a 2, x plus 2, x plus 2, or there's one other possibility, x plus, whoops, lost everything there. Oh no, that's not good, but we can fix that. There we go. Or the other thing is it could be x plus 
1, x plus 4. That's the other way you can get a 4 down there, right? The other way you can get this last term of a 4 is x plus 1, x plus 4. Now, which one of those two is it going to be? I'm going to write them out both here, and we can see x plus 2, x plus 2. If it's x plus 2, x plus 2, you're not going to get 5x as that middle term, right? If this is a 2 and a 2, you get 2x, 2x. That's only going to give 4x in the middle, and that's not what we want. If you have this as a 1 and a 4, it's going to give us 4x over here and 1x here. That gives you the right middle term. That's not the right factors for that. This is the factored form of that. You're basically just unmultiplying. You're taking a single polynomial and breaking it apart into two that multiply to give you that. All right, try that second one, this one here. x squared plus 7x plus 10. If it starts with x squared again, it's got to be x and x. That's the only way to get that first term. Again, if you look at the pattern, you'll see it. Right? If you have any two binomials and the result ends up being the highest power x squared, there's got to be an x and an x somewhere in there. And then if that last term's a 10, think about the possibilities here. You could have a 2 and a 5 or a 1 and a 10. If this was x plus 1, x plus 10, well, this wouldn't be 7 in the middle here because if you had that inside and that outside term, you get plus 1x plus 10x, you'd have plus 11x. So that's not the one it is. It's this one, it's x plus 2, x plus 5. If you check that middle term, you have plus 2x, plus 5x. That gives you the right middle term of plus 7x. Right. You can check just by multiplying them out and seeing. All right, That's factoring, I, I've got you started on it here. There's a few more to do there. It's more difficult when you have a negative in, as the, when that last term is a negative here. So maybe we'll do this one. If you're trying to multiply, if you're trying to factor that one, if it starts with x squared, if that's that highest power again, these two binomials have to have two x's in it. Maybe we'll stick with blue here just to be consistent. X x. If this last term is a minus six, well. To get the 6, you have to have a 1 and a 6 or a 3 and a 2. Now, you might look at this and say, look, there's a 5. It's got to be the 3 and the 2. That makes 5. That's not how it works, though, right? Because if this is a minus 6, one of these things has to be a minus. It either has to be minus 1 plus 6 or plus 1 and minus 6. I'm actually going to write it both ways here. Or plus 1 minus 6. And this has to be minus 3 and plus 2, or plus 3 minus 2. Now you got to think, how am I going to get the right middle term there? If I wanted to work out to minus 5x, this is the one it's got to be. It's got to be that one. All right, because that's going to give me plus 1 minus 6. That gives me that right middle term, right? You can double check here. All of all those possibilities, you got plus 1x minus 6x there. Plus 1x minus 6x gives you the right thing. Work it out and see. All right. So a little harder if that second term is negative. Or not second term, last term is negative. Because there's more possibilities to try. But you're looking at numbers that have that right difference between them. Now if we move into somewhere, the leading coefficient is not 1 as in it's something else, 2x squared, not just x squared, or 4x squared, not just x squared. If we're trying to factor this, start with that and say, if that's 2x squared, can this just be x and x? No, it can't, right? It has to be where it's going to give you the right thing there. So this comes from that first term. This comes from that last term. This middle term comes from two places, the outside and the inside, right? So I would look first at this and this, and then try the possibilities to get the right middle term for any of these things. You know it's got to be 2x and x to get 2x squared there. That's the only way to get 2x squared. Once you decide that, you can look at this 3 here. Well, there's only one thing it can be. To get a plus 3 there, 3 and 1, or it could be negative 3 and negative 1. But the fact that that's positive, right, 
if they're either both positive or both negative, if they're both negative, there's no way to get a positive middle term. So it's not going to be this one. Now, if you put plus 3 and plus 1 there, that may well be right. But since these are different now, now even though there's only one set of numbers is going to work, we've got to try it both ways. Oops, we've got to try it this way, plus 1, plus 3. As in, we have to try 2x plus 3 times x plus 1. And we have to try having those numbers the other way around there. Let me move this here for a second. Let's move this up here. Okay, so we have to try it that way or this way. 2x plus 1, x plus 3. So if you check the middle term on that, on each of those, you'll see why one works and one doesn't. Okay, now you might have formed a little rule in your head before for the ones we did where there wasn't a leading coefficient of, well, they got to multiply to multiply to this and add to this. Well, that works when there's no leading term, but it doesn't work when there is a leading term. There's no two numbers that multiply to 3 and add to 5. So if you form that little rule for yourself, you're going to have to modify your rule now. It isn't that it has to add to this, it's that it has to give you that right middle term. This one would give you, let's do the Let's do the bottom one first because I know it's the wrong one. <laughs> this, to check that inside term, to check that this is right, the outside and the inside. There's the inside, there's the outside. The inside gives you plus 1 times x, which is plus 1x. The outside gives you 2x times 3, which gives you plus 6x. Plus 6x plus 1x, that gives you plus 7x. That's not the right middle term there. Okay, you're looking for it to be plus 5x. It's not plus it's not plus 7x, so you know that this one's not right. Okay? But if you check the other one, this one. Right? If you check the middle term here, this gives you plus 3x. This gives you plus 2x. That gives you the right middle term. That's the right one. So it's got to be 2x plus 3, x plus 1. Always multiply it out and check. You can see, you should be able to multiply these two out and get the original thing to see. Now, just for the sake of completeness here, we should try one where we got lots of different things to try. Okay? So if we go down here, let's try, um, well, let's try, let's try this because we have a few things to try there, I think. Actually, you know what? No, let's try this. Let's do this one. I don't want to do them all for you here. This one I wanted to try because there's a f more than one thing to try for that first term. The fact that it's 6x squared means you've got to think through what it could be. You could have, you could have these two brackets. You could have 2x and 3x, or you could have 6x and 1x. And the fact that the last term is minus 2, you could have plus 1, minus 2, or minus 1, plus 2, or you could switch those around since these brackets are going to have different first terms. So you could have plus 2, minus 1 that way, or minus 2, plus 1 that way. So you got four different ways to put numbers in as the second term in each bracket, and you have two different ways to put the first terms in. So you got a lot of things to try. You got eight things to try there. But it's, if it factors, it's got to be one of them. All right? So I'm going to choose to start with this. I'll start with that one and try it each way here. So in other words, I am going to try 2x plus 1 times 3x minus 2. Now, if I look at the middle term there, right? That times that is 3x minus 4x. 3x minus 4x gives me minus 1x. That is not it. Now, a little trick here is that if it didn't work that way, if, if that gave me minus 1x, and all I do now is change the signs so that where I have positive and negative here, if I just switch the signs so that it's this way, all I'm going to do is switch the sign of that middle term. So if this gave me minus 1x, this is going to give me plus 1x. So I know neither one of those are going to work using that. All right? So then i got to try this, which is, 2x, let's get rid of that possibility there. 2x plus 2 and, leave myself a little more room here, 3x minus 
one. Now here's another little trick. If you notice that one of your brackets has a common factor, if that binomial has a common factor, then this has to have that same common factor. So if it says 2x plus 2, there's no way this can work because that doesn't have 2 as a common factor. So I know that this doesn't work, nor does it work if I go 2x minus 2. That doesn't work. So it's not this. It can't be that one. I've tried all four ways with that, and it's not going to work. So it's got to be this one, 6x and x. But then I just have to try those four different ways that I had this and see which one works. And right, if I try one of those, one of those is going to work. Now, I'm telling you right now that I'm going to use that same uh, logic here that I can't put a 2 in here because then this would have a common factor of 2, which means this would have to have a common factor of 2. So it's not going to be that. So it's got to be one of, it's got to be one of these two. So if I put in here 6x minus 1 and 6x plus 2, let's see what I get. I'll get rid of those. Uh, let's see what I get here. Let's move this down. Hang on to it for a second. All right, the one I'm trying is this one. If I check that middle term, I have plus 12x minus 1x. Okay, plus 12x minus 1x. Well, that would give me plus 11x. That's not what I want, but what I want is minus 11x. Minus 11x is the opposite of plus 11x. So using what I mentioned before here, if what I get is the exact opposite of what I'm looking for, all I need to do is switch these signs in here. I don't know if I can have erasing skills good enough to do that so uh, without erasing the number, which is what I did there. I had it as plus minus. Now what I want is I want to switch it to minus over there and plus over here. Now it's going to work, right? If we check this, this is minus 12x plus 1x. So that's the one. That's got to be the one. Right, you can double check to, to work it out in the end and see. Multiply this out, multiply all four terms out and see, right? If you do that, 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 you're gonna get this, all right? So that's factoring trinomials, okay? Notice we're doing it just by, we're not doing it by trial and error, we're doing it by educated, reducing it down from the number of possibilities and getting there. It's the most efficient method. All right, you try all of these other ones in here and you check when you get there, you'll know whether you have the right answer. If you look at all the possibilities for the first term, all the ways you can fill it in for the second term, right? This tells you that you gotta come up with the first terms from that and the last terms from that and then just try the possibilities until you get that right middle term, right? That's factoring trinomials.